Well, we have just gone through the Passover, the New Testament Passover, which is the New Covenant Memorial Service. And the Days of Unleavened Bread today, of course, being the last day of Unleavened Bread. And these days all deal with the death of Christ with his body and his blood. And now for the rest of the story. Let's turn over to Psalm 16. We begin there. Psalm 16 and verse 8 says, I have set the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad, and my glory rejoices. My flesh also shall rest in hope. For you will not leave my soul in Sheol, or the grave, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. So this was a prophecy, of course, of Christ, saying that Jesus would not stay dead. He would not remain in the grave long enough to see decay. So we go over now to Luke chapter 24, the last chapter of Luke. And... Verse 36 says, Now as they said these things, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said to them, Peace be to you. But they were terrified and frightened and supposed they had seen the Spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? Why do you do doubts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, that it is myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones, if you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. But while they did not still did not believe for joy and marveled. He said to them, have you any food here? So they gave him a piece of broiled fish and some honeycomb and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, these are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me, the entire Old Testament. And we just read one of the prophecies from the Psalms. And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. So all these scriptures that he had quoted to them for the last three and a half years, it's just kind of like, what's he talking about? What does this mean? You know, they didn't relate. Now he's explained it to them. Then he said to them, thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. So Jesus opened their understanding. And several days later, Peter explained it. See, up till now, you know, it was just confusion, really. Just they taking it in, but, you know, not really sure what it meant. Well, then a few days later, on the day of Pentecost, Peter actually explains it in Acts chapter 2 and verse 25. He says, For David says concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is at my right hand, that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart rejoiced, and my tongue was glad. Moreover, my flesh also will rest in hope. For you will not leave my soul in Hades, or the grave, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of joy in your presence. So Peter is now quoting from Psalm 16, which he now understands and can now explain. So he's taken the words of the psalm, now that he understands all that was taking place and what had happened, 
with Christ and he's explaining to the people on the day of Pentecost what had happened to Christ and that he was dead and he is now alive. He wasn't allowed to stay in the grave. It says, Men and brethren, let me speak freely to you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried and his tomb is with us to this day. So David, who they all knew, he says, he's still dead. He's still in the grave. He's still with us. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his body according to the flesh he would raise up the Christ to sit on his throne he foreseeing this spoke concerning the resurrection of the Christ that his soul was not left in Hades nor did his flesh see corruption this Jesus God has raised up of which we are all witnesses therefore being exalted to the right hand of God and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit he poured out this which you now see and hear for David did not ascend into the heavens, but he says himself, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. So he's saying Jesus was resurrected, and they were all witnesses to that point. So we go back a couple pages to the book of John, chapter 20, and verse 18. It says, Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things to her. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be with you. So they were assembled behind closed doors for fear of the Jews. And of course, if you can put yourself in their shoes, this was just a couple of days since the Passover, since they were all rounded up since Peter had denied him three times and they saw him get dragged away and beaten and crucified. And so they were saying, you know, we got to hide. Otherwise, they'll get the rest of us. And you can think that the chief priests and the scribes are thinking, well, we got the leader. We can get the other 12. We can stamp this thing out right now. So they were all hiding you know, for fear of the Jews. And Jesus came and stood in the midst of them and said, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. So Jesus said to them again, Peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Now Thomas, called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said to him, We have seen the Lord. So he said to them, Unless I see his, in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. So he didn't want to just see him. He actually wanted to put his hand inside where the spear had tore the hole in him. And after eight days, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas with them. Jesus came, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace to you. Then he said to Thomas, Reach your finger here and look at my hands, and reach your hand here and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. And you can only imagine what that would have been like put his hand inside of him because he had no blood. So he wasn't warm as he manifested himself in the flesh. And unless he manifested the heat, he would have been cold because he's just flesh and bone. There was no blood in him. And that's what keeps us warm is the blood circulating through our system. So you can only imagine what 
<laughs> if Thomas actually did it. He said, here, go ahead, reach your hand in here. I don't know. No, I'll take your word for it. But, uh, so Thomas uh, answered and said to him, my Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. And that includes all of us. Because we haven't seen God. We haven't seen Christ. And yet we believe. And truly Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And that believing you may have life in his name. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and in this way he showed himself. Simon Peter, Thomas, the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, which is John and James, and two other disciples were together. And Simon Peter said to them, I'm going to go fishing. And they said, well, we're going with you also. And they went out and immediately got in the boat, and that night they caught nothing. But when the morning had now come, Jesus stood on the shore, yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to them, Children, have you any food? They answered him, No. And he said to them, Cast the net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast, and now they were not able to draw it in because of the multitude of fish. Therefore that disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he had removed it, and plunged into the sea. Now most people, whenever you see people jump into the water, they usually take off their coat before they jump in. He put his coat on. So it must have been kind of difficult to swim with a coat on. And then when he got there, he was all wet. His coat was all wet. So exactly what was meant by the outer garment isn't sure, but uh, he wasn't in his swimming trunks, <laughs> so he, he put something on which made it difficult. And he, of course, he was impatient because uh, now the other disciples in verse 8 came in the little boat, for they were not far from shore, only about 200 cubits or about 100 yards, dragging the net with them. Then as soon as they had come to land, they saw a fire of coals there and fish laid on it and bread. And Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish which you have just caught. Simon Peter went up and dragged the net to land. So he could have stayed in the boat with them and avoided all that, but uh, impatient. Full of large fish, 153, and altogether there were so many, although there were so many, the net was not broken. Jesus said to them, Come and eat breakfast. Yet none of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? Knowing that it was the Lord. Then he came and took the bread and gave it to them, and likewise the fish. Now this is the third time Jesus showed himself to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. Does anybody like fish for breakfast? <laughs> Seems a little strange. But what was... One of the signs that was that he was trying to get across to them. What did he feed them for breakfast? Fish and bread, just like at the feeding of the 5,000. So they would think back from a year ago and say, yeah, we've seen this before, fish and the bread. So this is the third time now that Jesus has showed himself to the disciples since he was raised from the dead. First Corinthians chapter 15. First Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 1. And Paul gives us this account. He says, Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preached to you, which also you received and in which you stand, by which also you are saved, if you hold fast that word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I deliver to you first of all that which I also received, which is again what he said back in chapter 11. I'm just telling you what Christ told me and what I witnessed, by which I also received 
that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, and that he was seen by Cephas, then by the twelve, and after that he was seen by over 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain to the present, but some have fallen asleep. After that he was seen by James, then by all the apostles, then last of all he was seen by me also as one born out of due time. So, of course he's referring to himself, if you go over to Galatians, then you read the account where he says that he was with the Lord that he received everything that he was teaching. He didn't get it from Peter. He didn't get it from John. He didn't get it from Andrew. He got it straight from Christ. Christ taught him directly, just like he did the other disciples. That's why he says he was seen, last of all, as one born out of due time, because he wasn't part of the original 12. He was after the fact. So, Jesus appeared to all who were important to be witnesses for the gospel and their sorrow was turned to joy remember on that night of the Passover when they were walking to the garden and he was explaining what was what was happening and he said you know you when you see me again your sorrow will be turned to joy and so their sorrow was turned to joy they were glad when they saw him and then of course they were sad again when he left <laughs> but at least they knew he was alive and came to know and understand what was happening. So over 500 at one time. There were, so there was over 500 people together at one time, just a big crowd that he appeared to, and they saw and knew and understand were witnesses of who he was. So now keep in mind, there were only 40 days, just over a month, from the resurrection to the ascension. 40 days. Back in Acts chapter 1 and verse 12. Acts chapter 1 and verse 12. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. And when they had entered they went up into the upper room where they were staying. Peter and James and John and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas the son of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers, which would be James and Jude and Joseph and Simon, and though it doesn't say it, you can only imagine if the rest of the family was there, probably his sisters were there too, and maybe their husbands. So, Peter stood up in the midst in those days, in the midst of the disciples. Altogether, the number of names was about 120. So, sometime during that 40 days, the number went from over 500 to 120. And no reason is given. Now, 20 years or so later, Paul says that some of them had died. But within days, people forget. They get busy with other things. Maybe they tell themselves it was just a dream. But how could you not stay in touch and want to be informed about what was happening? And in their case, to be there unless it was an extreme fear of the Jews there, there is no other explanation given at the time of the ascension and the time of Pentecost there was only 120 and yet there was over 500 just days or you know a matter of weeks earlier because we're only talking 40 days. So it just makes you, you know, it makes me wonder. Now there's one possibility, but it doesn't explain it the way it's written. It says they went to the upper room. 
but you don't know if that upper room I could I can't imagine an upper room holding 120 people so I don't think that was probably what it meant but uh, that's the only other explanation you'd be dealt with but now yeah, the room only held 120 people but I'd be kind of strange that they were staying in a place with some big room like that but again that's uh, that's what we're left with so you have to kind of wonder you know alone what's happening what what's going on with all these people and in just a matter of days now we see the same thing happening in just a matter of years how the church went from 150,000 down to to what sure some have died but others have come along and yet you you wonder what's going on people just decide you know well I really didn't believe that anyway I got other things to do who knows why people do what they do but Jesus was resurrected and they were witnesses and another prophecy was fulfilled on the day after the resurrection Leviticus chapter 23 we can't get away from Leviticus Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 9 and the Lord spoke to Moses saying speak to the children of Israel and say to them when you come into the land which I give to you and reap its harvest then you shall bring a sheep of the first fruits of your harvest to the priest he shall wave the sheep before the Lord to be accepted on your behalf on the day after the Sabbath the priest shall wave it and you shall offer on that day when you wave the sheep a male lamb of the first year without blemish as a burnt offering to the Lord its grain offering shall be two tenths of an ephah of fine flour mixed with oil an offering made of fire to the Lord for a sweet aroma and its drink offering shall be of wine one-fourth of a hen you shall eat neither bread nor parched grain nor fresh grain until the same day that you have brought an offering to your God it shall be a statute forever throughout your generations and all your dwellings and you shall count for yourselves from the day after the Sabbath from the day that you brought the sheep of the wave offering seven Sabbaths shall be completed count 50 days to the day after the seventh Sabbath then you shall offer a new grain offering to the Lord so the wave sheep was offered and the count to Pentecost was begun now this is the one day that the Jews count differently than we do they count start to count with the day after the first day of unleavened bread count from the 16th of the first month because they don't understand that Christ was the wave sheep and what we understand that he was resurrected and the day after the resurrection on that first day of the week he had to be presented to God the Father as the first fruit to be accepted on our behalf that was all part of the sacrifice so John chapter 20 once again John chapter 20 and verse 10. Uh, verse 10. Then the disciples went away again to their homes, but Mary stood outside the tomb weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting, one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. 
They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said, Then because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Now when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there and did not know that it was Jesus. And Mr. Armstrong used to always uh, kind of give an example of at that time they used uh, people as gardeners in the cemeteries that were not the pretty people. And so when she saw him and remember what he would have looked like beaten with all the stripes big hole in the side and you know whether he still had blood stains all over him or what what the case was we don't know exactly what Mary saw but she didn't recognize him until he uh, said to her woman why are you weeping whom are you seeking and she supposing him to be the gardener said to him sir if you have carried him away tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away and Jesus said to her Mary she turned and said to him Rabboni which is to say, teacher, Jesus said, do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my father and to your father and to my God and to your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things to her. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst to them and said, peace be with you. So, faster than the speed of thought, Jesus went from the garden, speaking with Mary, to present himself to God the Father as the wave sheep offering, and spent whatever time that they spent together, and that same day, once again, back to Jerusalem to appear before the disciples. So again, how far away is heaven? Who, who knows? Have you heard the, the newest planet that they just discovered? It's, well, I forget what they said. It's 500 light years away or something like that. But it's, uh, they says it's almost a twin of Earth. It's in the right position of that solar system where it can uh, probably support life because it's not too hot and not too cold and it's just slightly larger than earth they said so they're always finding out new stuff but how far away is heaven how many light years away is heaven how far away is God and yet when we are spirit beings faster than you could think it you're going to be there how fast can you travel? Faster than the speed of thought. You say, God's throne, you're there. And when it's time to leave Jerusalem, you're there. Just that quick. And that's the way it can happen. And, and you get the same example from uh, Gabriel when he appeared to Daniel. Daniel's praying. And he says, while I was still speaking and praying, Gabriel shows up and says, as soon as you opened your mouth, I was told to go. And here I am. And you can read the prayer. It wasn't but a few seconds long. You know, what, a minute, two minutes? And yet, Gabriel goes from heaven, because he was one of the messengers, right there. So, that's one of the things we have to look forward to. Space travel, faster than the speed of thought. As you think it, you're already there. <laughs> so, again, Jesus became then the first fruit. 1 Corinthians 15, again. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 20 says, But now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep and we are then of course a type of first fruits as it says over in Romans for since by man came death by man also came the resurrection of the dead for as in Adam all die even so in Christ all 
shall be made alive, but each one in his own order. Christ, the first fruits, afterwards those who are Christ at his coming, because we are part of the first fruits. He was just the first of the first fruits, because the barley was the first fruit crop, but he was the first because he was the wave sheep, the first offering that had to be brought, because they couldn't harvest the crop, they couldn't eat anything of the crop until that wave sheep was offered first. So, not only were all these other prophecies fulfilled when Christ died and then was resurrected, but he also fulfilled the prophecies of being the wave sheep offering and the first fruit. And 40 days later, at the ascension, some other things happened. Go over to Acts chapter 1 again. Acts chapter 1 and verse 1 says, The former account I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. So this is Luke writing the book of Acts, and he's referring back to the book of Luke, the gospel of Luke, that he's talking about, the former account that he's talking to, his writing to his friend Theophilus. That Jesus both began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up after he, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandment to the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom he had also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs, being seen by them forty days, during forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And we just read how he appeared to all of the twelve and then five hundred at once and then to Paul. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. For, G uh, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? See, they still didn't get the whole picture. They were still thinking physical and the kingdom of Israel, that little area and the time of David and Solomon. So that was her question. Because what did he tell them? Remember what he told them back at the, uh, well one account says it was at the Passover. You will sit on 12 thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. So, is this it? Are we, we going to start judging now? You know, we thought it was going to happen before, and then you got tortured and died, and then you come back to life, and, and uh, so what's happening now? And I bet they were really scratching their heads when he <laughs> went up and left, saying, oh, no. <laughs> so... He said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. And what did Jesus say back in Matthew 24? He said, No one knows the hour of the day, not the angels, but my Father only. Only God knows. Only the Father knows because it says he has put it in his own authority. Where is it? It's in the scroll that is in his hand, as we read about in Revelation 4 and 5. God the Father is sitting on the throne with a scroll in his hand. And until he puts his hand out, and Christ comes and takes the scroll out of his hand, it is all in his own authority. <clears throat> Nobody's going to take it out of his hand. Nobody can do it. That's what the scripture says. Finally, Jesus, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, has prevailed to take the scroll out of the Father's hand. When he does, it all begins. And he opens the first seal. And the beast power comes on the scene and begins to reign. And it all begins. One seal 
after the next, after the next. But none of that happens until Christ takes the scroll out of the Father's hand. And until that time, it's in the Father's own authority. And Christ doesn't know when the Father's going to stick out his hand. He's looking down here at all these world events, and he's going, e -e -e, not yet. <laughs> e -e -e, no, not yet. And he's waiting for all these things, all these pieces of the puzzle to come together when the time is right. And he's going to hold out that hand. And Christ will get up, come over, and take it. And that last seven years will begin. And one event after the next, after the next, after the next, until it's all over and we hear that trumpet sound. But right now, as it says, it is in the Father has put in his own authority. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And that's one of the reasons given uh, when Paul comes on the scene and the church is persecuted in Acts 7, 8, and 9 is because it was like they were all just sitting around Jerusalem and he says, you're supposed to go. You're supposed to go throughout the land and through Samaria and to all parts of the earth. But they were kind of comfortable building the church in Jerusalem and so the persecution came on the church and it says, and then they went everywhere preaching. Now when he had spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who said to them, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? The same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. And you know every one of them had the question, When? When? You can only imagine they were just wondering, what's he doing? He just keeps going up and up, and what's he doing? <laughs> and finally, he disappears, and two angels say, what you looking at? <laughs> He's gone, but he'll be back exactly the same way. But how depressing would it have been in if you would have told them, it's going to be 2,000 years. And yet in the parables, in one of the parables, he said the landowner goes away for a long time. So it, they had the hints, but they didn't understand. It. So how long will it yet be? We see things happening, and we wonder. So, when he ascended into heaven, what event took place at that ascension? Well, we'll go back to Psalm 68 for the prophecy. Psalm 68 and verse 18. You have ascended on high. You have led captivity captive. You have received gifts among men, even from the rebellious, that the Lord God might dwell there. Blessed be the Lord, who daily loads us with benefits, the God of our salvation. Our God is the God of salvation, and to God the Lord belong escapes from death. Escapes from death. So what does he mean? What does he mean? Led captivity captive. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. And uh, verse 8. Therefore he says, When he ascended on high... He led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Now this, he ascended, what does it mean but that he also first descended 
and to the lower parts of the earth. He who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things, or fulfill all the prophecies that were written. So, he died and descended, was buried in the grave, and then he was resurrected and he ascended into heaven. And in the process, he led captivity captive. So let's stop at Hebrews chapter 2 on our way back. Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 14 says, Inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same, that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is, the devil, and release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Everyone until then was in fear of death and subject to bondage because of that fear. Revelation chapter 1 and 18. Revelation 1 and verse 18. I am he who lives and was dead and behold I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of Hades, the grave, and of death. He led captivity captive because he has the keys to the grave. Everyone in the grave is held captive by the grave. Nobody can get out. But Christ has the keys of the grave because he conquered death. He defeated Satan. And he ascended to heaven, thereby leading captivity captive. Because now he is in charge of the captive. He's in charge of the prison because he has the keys of the grave and of death. So, what happens? Well, you know, 1 Corinthians 15. Once again, 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 52. He says, In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this, in, for this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. <clears throat> so when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, when at the last trump. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O grave, where is your victory? Because Christ has conquered the grave and death, and he has the keys. And at the last trump, he unlocks the grave for all of us whom are dead and all who are alive and remain will be changed. So he led captivity captive. He gave escapes from death and he gave gifts to men. Acts chapter 2 the day of Pentecost as Peter says it in verse 38. Then Peter said to them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. He gave gifts to men. He gave the Holy Spirit to those who would be in the first resurrection. The gift of the Holy Spirit, our down payment, our guarantee of eternal life, the spirit of truth which leads us into all truth, 
the seal of God, which identifies us to him and his angels, which we have because we have received the body and the blood of Christ, and have the sign of unleavened bread representing his body and the blood on the doorpost of our heart, because we have repented, been baptized, and received his Holy Spirit, and do those things which are pleasing in his sight. And that is more of the story. And just as a little trivial, uh, little trivia, uh, I mentioned this before, but just if, don't ask me why it works out this way. Uh, you know, the, uh, the Bible talks about the new moon, and it also calls it the beginning of months and the first of the month. So it's, it's, uh, it can vary depending on the full moon as to when the, the new moon or beginning of month is. So when you, uh, and I mentioned that the other day about when you go to the feast, you'll see how the full moon is divided by the sunset. And day one, last Tuesday, day one of unleavened bread, the first day of unleavened bread is day one. The Feast of Trumpets is day 164. It's always that way. I've taken my Holy Day calendars back 30 years. Just played with the calendar. And it's always worked out that way. If you count the first day of unleavened bread as day one, trumpets will be day 164. If it changes, let me know.